Hello and welcome to the Math Magic Show. <laughs> Just kidding. Let's be serious. This is mathematics. So here we're going to study whether ln of x squared is the same as 2 ln x. I'm going to take the visual approach because then it's very easy to see things and explore them. So specifically on the left side, what I have is the graph of 2 ln x. That's a better looking 2. <laughs> Let's zoom in on some key pieces of information here. So specifically, take a look. Right here, this is x equals positive 1. When that goes into 2 ln x, it gives you an output of 0 because this is on the x-axis. So clearly here, the y-coordinate is equal to 0 right here. Not a problem. For other values of x, as you can see, for example, whatever this value of x he here is, say x has some value, you see that there's a perfectly defined output. So what I mean by output, let's be clear on that, is that basically you can imagine like a little arrow that directs it this way. See, this goes in. And then you get an output on the y-axis down right here. There's our output. So you follow the little arrow. For values, for example, to the right of x equals 1, something similar happens. So for example, let's grab a different, say this is the input, then the output is on the y-axis right here, you see? So it's not a problem. For all of these cases, you get a nice output. This applies for values of x between 0 and 1, then 1 itself, and then when you go all the way to the right. So for that reason, when you talk about the domain of 2 ln x, you might begin simply by shading this way. All of these input give a nice output for 2 ln x. 0 itself, which is right here, that's always a special case. As you can see, it has to be excluded. So this is x equals 0. And what is the reason for that? Think about this carefully, right? You have ln of 0. So that would give you, even if you multiply it by 2, that's not really too important. That is D and E. Why is that the case? And the reason is that, take a look. Let's look at a simplified case. So imagine you just, you just try to do ln of 0. What this is saying, imagine this is your y. Okay, what this is saying is that E raised to some magical value of y can be turned into zero when you look at it in exponential form not possible so for that reason d and e as zero itself and this shows up in a graph of 2 ln y or just ln y even by itself simply by observing you see when you go down here this is negative infinity and here there's always a gap the reason is that the vertical axis, the y-axis, is the vertical asymptote. So there should always be a gap as you go towards a negative infinity, the values of y slide down that way. So now let's take a look at the fundamental difference, for example, in the other graph here. Okay, let me just travel through my... Okay, so I've traveled over to the other graph. Now remember that this graph, just to remind ourselves, represents ln of x squared. This is somewhat different quantity, first of all, because you're squaring it means that the domain is bigger. Think about this for a second. So for example, this is the left side. And here, as you can see, you have negative 1 as the value of x at this position. If you do ln of negative 1 squared, it becomes the ln of 1, which is right here. That's a perfectly defined value because y is equal to 0 in that position. That's not a problem, you see? Scroll over to your ln world to this side, and here again you see that, for example, x equals 1. So if you do ln of 1 squared, you're going to have ln of 1, which again is equal to 0, which is, of course, just the y-coordinate right here, y equals 0. So what about at x equals 0 itself? That's always a slightly interesting case. That's this value right here. Imagine x equals 0. The same break applies as in 2 ln x. So what I mean is the following. Take a look. Of 0 squared is still ln of 0, which is still d and e. So you have two branches to ln of x squared, and the reason is that because you're squaring, you can input both positive values of x, and you can input negative values of x. And the squaring makes all of them positive in the end anyway, just the way that this negative 1 became a positive 1 on that side, precisely because of the action of this little humble 2. What happens, for example, when we go down? Well, take a look. See? They both approach negative infinity on both sides, so this is negative infinity <laughs> and beyond. <laughs> so it looks like that. I want to be clear here that the vertical axis is the vertical asymptote, and when we say we are approaching, remember what that means. It means the following. 
let me emphasize this key point that using arrows as x goes in this direction let me use a different color right here okay as x approaches zero from the right side the values of the function that are output they approach negative infinity right there you see that that's the way to visualize it if you like same thing will happen on that side take a look for example as x approaches zero from the left side the values of the function that are output also go down towards negative infinity it's like a little mechanical system really all right that is it for this one thank you so much for watching please leave a like and subscribe i'll see you in another video